Next on CARE 11 News, authorities may be closer than ever to solving the Jacob Wetterling case. Why the search for a suspect leads right back to Jacob's neighborhood. It's our top story in just minutes. One night some lawyers snuck into your home and made you sign a contract dictating that you have to be a mature, sedan-driving adult. The bad news, there really is your signature on the contract. The good news, there's a loophole. No one said it has to be boring. It can be fun. It can be gorgeous. It can be fast. That's the loophole. Huh. Philly cheesesteak pizza. No drooling this time. Guys like Philly cheesesteak, guys like Domino's pizza. That's why Domino's created the Philly cheesesteak pizza. Get a medium for only $9.99 and any second medium for just $5 more. Get the door. It's Domino's Philly cheesesteak pizza. Later on The Tonight Show, now that you know how it all ended, Jay's giving you one more chance to hang out with all the friends. Plus, tunes from the Black Eyed Peas, your local news is next. We might be as close as we've ever been to resolving that case. Authorities may be on the verge of identifying the man who kidnapped Jacob Wetterly. It's almost unfathomable to believe that somebody right here took Jacob. New theories and new hope in the 15-year search for answers. This is CARE 11 News at 10. Good evening. There's a dramatic change of focus in the Jacob Wetterling case. Investigators are very confident they will finally solve it. Tonight, what led to a fresh approach and why your help could make the difference. CARE 11's Rick Cupcella joins us once again with the exclusive story. Well, Julie, last night we reported the existence of a parallel crime that occurred just months before Jacob's abduction. 12-year-old Jared was abducted in Stearns County by a stranger in January of 1989. He was literally grabbed off the street, driven to a remote area, and sexually assaulted. But Jared got away. Little did authorities realize that 10 months later they'd receive an emergency phone call that would change things forever, one that haunts them to this very night. We believe that they have one of the boys because the, one of the boys did not come back with them. And yes, he Jacob, Jacob Wetterling. The sights and sounds of the Wetterling abduction still live in this part of Minnesota, trapped in the photographs. No vehicle was seen. This party approached them on foot. And the tape recordings made that fateful day. Because we had to just, like, run off, run off into the woods. Okay, you guys ran off into the woods, but nobody knows what happened to Jacob, right? Yeah. There are pieces of crime tape from back in the days before it was yellow. Plaster casts from the drive where Jacob was taken. Imprints of shoes and tire tracks. Ever-present reminders. The last known links to a little boy. This is believed to be Jacob's last footprint, captured in time on that dusty rural road. It's no wonder police were searching for a van or some vehicle. The toe marks of his tennis shoe appear to go right up to the tire's edge. The car that turned around in the driveway really quick and left has, has been located, and that particular person did not take Jacob. But just this year, almost 15 years after the abduction, investigators announced they're discounting this track they believe they've accounted for that tire. The loss of that lead, they say, is a very good thing. What it did, in essence, is it breathed all kinds of investigative life back into a 15-year-old case. And all of a sudden, we're working on this case like it's something that just happened. The absence of the vehicle is compelling. It suggests to investigators Jacob's abductor left on foot. That narrows the scope of their investigation dramatically. We are more convinced that this occurred by somebody local and somebody on foot. We're more convinced of that now than we ever have been. The suspects here are few, very few, and they're the kind of people, according to the sheriff, who'd have a reason to be on this rural road in the middle of nowhere on a Sunday night. It's almost unfathomable to believe that somebody right here took Jacob and has been right here all along. The Wetterling investigation was global almost from the start. The local focus is a dramatic shift. Even the possibility of there being no car 
it changes everything. It's never been easy for Jacob's mom to believe perhaps a neighbor could have taken her son. But Patty Wetterling, now something of an expert on missing children herself, has long understood the obvious questions aren't always so obvious. They went door to door and they asked people, did you notice anything unusual that night? And what they're now asking and what I'm asking is people to talk about the usual. Who's usually around? Who was usually there on Sunday nights? We're asking for everybody who was there. Not the unusual, but the usual. Just this week, police have acknowledged another not so public aspect of the Jacob Wetterling investigation. The existence of a parallel crime. The story of another little boy, Jared, abducted from the streets not far from where Jacob was taken. Police were so struck by the similarities of the two cases, they had Jared put together a sketch of his abductor and then released it as a suspect in the Wetterling kidnapping. Patty has always known there was a Jared. All I knew him was Jared. I never knew Jared's last name. She met him for the first time just a few weeks ago. Well, and the pressure they put him through. Oh, my God. Every time we had a new suspect, they're running it past this poor 13-year-old kid. Yeah. My gosh, that's hard. For 15 like years, they've been fighting the same thing, coming from very different pain. Patty looking for a son. Jared always searching for his own attacker, knowing he too was trying to find Jacob. Oh, it just kind of feels good to have you here. <laughs> He's kind of like part of the team now, you know? Together, they say, they'll push harder. There was always the notion of let's put Jared on TV and see where that gets us or what leads will that bring up, but, uh, you know, until now, and I did so willingly after you had contacted me, and it was, you know, no authorities asking me to do so. It was me just saying, it's time. It's time to just, uh, let's hear about my case or any other similar cases out there that we can possibly connect to this case. And, uh... Whatever may come of it, I hope it to be positive. Patty Wetterling is excited about working with Jared. She wants him to meet the other boys who were with Jacob that fateful night to see what they might come up with together. Patty, Jared, the sheriff, they all agree that the coming together of everyone can make the difference. Here's where you come in. Anything is a possibility. The sheriff is looking for men today who would have been between the ages of 10 and 15 in the late 80s and early 90s. He's specifically looking for boys from the areas around St. Joe and Cold Spring who were approached in a sexual manner by an adult man and never reported it to police. They might have a small piece to the puzzle that would go a long way in helping us out. It might not be information that we can do anything with or that is relevant to our case, but let us make that decision. Sheriff says now is the time. Here is the number to call if you have any information, 320-251-4240. That is the Stearns County Sheriff's Department. That number is also at care11.com, along with other information related to this case. And Rick, you get the feeling they have a suspect in mind? Uh, absolutely. There are, there are a few uh, very specific suspects, and those suspects know who they are. They know that they are suspects. All right. Thank you, Rick. We know you'll be following it, too. Thanks, Rick. In other news tonight, if you haven't been paying attention to your recent phone bills, you may want to take a closer look. Attorney General Mike Hatch yeah. is suing AT&T for allegedly billing 17,000 Minnesotans who aren't even customers. The charges started appearing on bills in January and ranged from $4 to $10. Now, AT&T will tell you this was a computer glitch, although that isn't what their first explanation was. They will also say that they're giving the credit, although we still get as many complaints today as we did in January about the credit not having been given. AT&T says a billing error caused by a combination of system issues has affected as many as 300,000 AT&T customers and 800 non-customers nationwide. The company says refunds or credits will be given within 60 to 90 days. A Minnesota man with a history of drunk driving is tonight accused of a crash with horrifying consequences. He allegedly ran a stop sign and struck a family's car, killing a baby, injuring another little girl, and her parents. Authorities say he was drunk. His actions have torn a family apart. Care 11's John Croman reports. 
This is all that was left of Omar and Trisha Hadiji's Chevy sedan after it was broadsided by this Nissan pickup near Albert Lee. It didn't look like a car, it looked like scrap metal. Two weeks later, Trisha and Omar are still hospitalized at St. Mary's in Rochester. Their seven-month-old baby daughter, Chloe, could not be saved. She died of head injuries. So I got to go in and see her, and all, all it was was a little bruise on her head, and her head, had, her skull was cracked. It was just the jolt, or the impact. Mary's daughter, Trisha, has a broken arm, fractured legs, and memory loss. Her husband, Omar, is dealing with broken legs, a mangled arm, and broken ribs. But both are expected to recover. <laughs> the miracle is two-year-old Zoe, who escaped with a broken leg, but has one image branded on her young mind. Can you tell him where Mommy is? Where's Mommy? Mommy's stuck. Mommy's stuck. She's stuck. And you know why she's saying that? Why she because she was in the back seat watching them take mommy out with the jaws of life. Oh, man. The Freeborn County Sheriff's Office says the driver of the Nissan, 31-year-old Mark Lewis Lovell, was legally drunk. Investigators say he was headed south on County 30, hit these railroad tracks, flew past the stop sign, and slammed into the Howdigees, who were on County 46 and had no stop sign. You know you're going to drink, lock your keys in your car, and don't get behind the wheel. It was not the first time for Mark Lovell. He was convicted of DWIs in Minneapolis in 1996 and in Lakeville in 95. That police report says Lovell blew through a stop sign while legally drunk and ran off the road. And where's Chloe? <laughs> yeah, Chloe CP night night. Little Zoe can't fathom what has become of her baby sister, but Chloe will be missed. Beautiful. She smiled. She was just like she had wings already. She was an angel. Now, Chloe's parents, Trisha and Omar, are expected to be in rehab for at least a year, and doctors are monitoring Trisha's memory loss closely, hoping that it's not permanent. The Wells Fargo Bank in Austin, where Omar works, has set up a fund for the family. In the meantime, the man who hit them, Mark Lovell, has not been formally charged yet. The Freeborn County Attorney's Office is expected to make a decision on that tomorrow or Monday. Frank and Julie? Is there some debate over what the charges might be, John? Well, there's a wide range. It could be manslaughter. It could be just misdemeanor uh, vehicular homicide. It could be several different things uh, if they go ahead and charge him. All right. Thank you, John. Some uh, tense moments at a Twin Cities department store tonight after a toddler fell from an escalator. It happened inside this Marshall Field store at the Maplewood Mall. Police say a three-year-old boy was climbing a ledge alongside an escalator when he fell about 12 feet to the floor below. Police say the boy was conscious when they arrived, but he was taken to a hospital for an evaluation. A decorated Navy veteran is tonight a convicted bank robber. A federal jury found Mark Samples guilty of robbing a Red Wing credit union in 2001. Samples claimed medication made him so depressed that he planned to kill himself after giving his wife and son the money from the robbery. He was supposed to go on trial in 2002, but fled the state with his then two-year-old son. The two were found 15 months later in Ohio. Minneapolis police are looking for two teenagers who attacked this woman yeah. last Saturday afternoon at her Nokomis area bookstore. Lynn Murray says the young men kicked and punched her while demanding cash. They even tried to rip the rings off her fingers. They eventually made off with $185. We have a gun, we have a knife, which they did not have. Um, at that point, it wouldn't matter to me anyway because I figured they could kill me if they really wanted to. Murray says one of the teens had a tattoo on his neck that read Jerry. She hopes to see them again in a police lineup. Minneapolis police say a man killed in an apparent drive-by shooting today was not the intended target. Officers found the man's body in the front yard of a North Minneapolis home, the victim of a fatal gunshot wound. A second man was injured in the shooting. He's being treated at North Memorial tonight. For the first time, President Bush apologized today for the abuse of Iraqi prisoners by American soldiers. But he also said Donald Rumsfeld will keep his job. His comments came as a growing list of Democrats are calling for the defense secretary's ouster. They accuse Rumsfeld of knowing about the abuse allegations and keeping it secret for months. But the president, who aides say had harsh words for Rumsfeld yesterday, is standing by him. Uh, secretary Rumsfeld is a really good Secretary of Defense. He's an important part of my cabinet and he'll stay in my cabinet. Rumsfeld has been called to testify at a Senate hearing tomorrow to explain how prisoner abuse could occur. Meanwhile, even more disturbing pictures of abuse surfaced today. They appeared in today's Washington Post. One showed an Army reservist here holding a naked Iraqi prisoner by a leash. Another showed a prisoner handcuffed to a bed with women's underwear over his head. 
The International Red Cross reportedly warned the Pentagon last year about such abuse. Osama bin Laden has reportedly put a bounty on the heads of top U.S. and U.N. officials in Iraq. According to a militant website, the Al-Qaeda leader is offering 10,000 grams of gold to anyone who kills Paul Bremer or the top U.S. military commanders. That works out to about $130,000 worth of gold. An Oregon attorney is being questioned tonight about his involvement in March's deadly railway bombing in Madrid. FBI agents detained Brandon Mayfield in Portland, Oregon today. Spanish authorities apparently found his fingerprints on bomb-related material associated with the attack. Mayfield, a convert to Islam, has apparently been linked to terror suspects arrested after 9-11. A Wisconsin woman says the best Mother's Day present she ever received arrived last week. Joe Wagner came home from Iraq. The Army granted him an emergency leave because his mom, Patrice Confer, is battling cancer and may only have weeks to live. She also had to battle the Army to get Joe home. He was granted an emergency leave the day after his story made national headlines. Probably the longest he sat next to me in his entire life. <laughs> you think, Joe? No, really. I sat last year for like an hour once. <laughs> <laughs> Wagner says the Army may assign him to work in Altoona at a recruiting office while his mother is ill. Eventually, he says he wants to go back to Iraq. The morning after pill won't be available over the counter anytime soon. The government today rejected over the counter sales of the emergency contraception. The Food and Drug Administration cited concern about young teenagers' use of the pills. What better way to say goodbye to friends than with your friends? More than 30 friends in North Branch gathered tonight at their own coffee shop. Not Central Perk, but Cool Beans. For the past 10 years, they've grown to love Monica, Phoebe, Rachel, Ross, Chandler, and Joey. But it's going to be really sad, and um, we're going to have to try to make time to get together with our friends and not just stay at home and be sad about it. We got Kleenex at every table. I'm going to be bawling my eyes off. <laughs> you know, I mean, I cry, I cry at the commercials. If you want to see those friends together again, stay tuned for The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. The entire cast will be Jay's special guest. The Tonight Show begins immediately following the news right here on CARE 11. Oh, Randy Shaver was just a puddle. I heard he was just bawling in the sports office. <laughs> yeah. We had to pick him up off the floor. Can't wait to talk to Randy in a few minutes. <laughs> Still ahead, you'll see Randy and a lot of Twins highlights, the highlights you can't see on TV. Plus a monster of an airliner, the biggest passenger plane ever made. Next. And I'm Ken Barlow in the backyard. Are you ready? It's that time of the year. It's back. Start your engines. We're headed north. The cabin cast for the weekend when we come right back. 102.9 Light FM. It's perfect at work. They only stop the music twice an hour. That means more music. Continuous half hours of light rock favorites. 102.9 Light FM. You've got to try it. My daughter was falling behind in school. I did everything I could, even hired a private tutor, but she kept falling behind. Then her teacher recommended Huntington. At Huntington Learning Centers, we help children catch up in school with a proven approach that gets to the source of your child's academic problem and expert individual instruction to fix it. Help your child do better in school. Call Huntington today. Ease away the day's tension with big savings on Aqualux Whirlpool tubs from Menards. This luxurious Antoinette Whirlpool features nine soothing jets. Or choose this elegant Catherine Corner Whirlpool. On sale, $749 each. Add style to your ceilings with beautiful Hunter fans. They're all on sale. This 44-inch Auberville fan with light comes in nickel, provincial gold, or French vanilla finishes. Just $79.99. Get the best for less money at Menards. Save big money at Menards. I love leather. I love how it feels and how it looks. Hi, I'm Jim Gabbard, and I love leather because it can be casual or formal, contemporary or traditional, bold or quiet. We're celebrating the doubling of our leather selection 
with a million dollars of leather ready for immediate delivery. And no interest until 2006 on anything in the store, but only until May 31st. You'll find your home at Gabbard. At Denny Hecker Mortgage, I've got a new product that I think you need to know about. It's called the Option Arm, and it's great for all types of borrowers, with a start rate as low as 1.25%. Now is the time for you to learn more about this product. I invite you to attend one of our weekly seminars where you can learn more and find out if it's right for you and your family. It could be the last loan you'll ever need. Call the number on your screen now or register online at DennyHeckerMortgage.com. 102.9 Light FM. I listen all day at work. Perfect at work. They play the most music. Continuous half hours of light rock favorites. 102.9 Light FM. You've got to try it. Give me a ticket for an aeroplane. It is not just a big old jetliner. It's the biggest jet airliner. Engineers in France are building a 550-passenger jet by far the largest ever built. The Airbus will be a luxury liner with a stand-up gift shop and its own bar. Restrooms will also come complete with showers so passengers can freshen up on transatlantic flights. That's beautiful. Wow. That'd be cool, huh? No take, kidding. Take a shower in a plane. It's kind of weird. <laughs> anyway, we'll drop that right now. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, let's go to the cabin cast right now. You guys buckle up. Uncle Kenny's driving. Let's get to it. Here we go. We're heading up north. We're going to check out Saturday's forecast because you know what? As you head north, the weather's actually going to get better on Saturday. Dry weather in Amory, 66 degrees at Duluth, 62. Cool along the North Shore with a lake breeze, 48 degrees. Head over to Mille Lacs, 67. It should be dry there as well. Nisswa, Brainerd Lakes area, 66 degrees. Headed west, though, and a little bit southwest, we are looking for the chance of an afternoon shower or thunderstorm, but no all-day rain. For those of you in Alexandra, Alexandria and Wilmer. What, you like the music? Pretty good, huh? All right, we're moving along now. Temperatures today in the Twin Cities a lot cooler than yesterday, but you know the high was actually just after midnight last night when we topped out at 71 degrees, 56 degrees low this morning. Get used to the music. This is an all-summer thing, you two. A trace of rain early this morning, 56 right now. It is clear. North winds at 10, and the barometer is on the rise from 30.14. Temperatures across the area quite mild. Not last night, 77 like we had, but rather 20 degrees cooler than that, or 21 to be exact. 56 in the Twin Cities, 46 at Mora, and you can see how it gets progressively cooler as you head off to the north. Not only is it cooler as you head off to the north, it's also drier. That's the source of the dry air. There's humid air to the south, and right in between here, right over north and northern parts of Iowa into central and southern Wisconsin, there's a front. That front is going to be the bane of our collective existence for the next several days, especially weather people trying to forecast hit or miss showers, because what it's going to do is bump back and forth, north and south, so south over the next couple of days, the battle between the humid air and the dry air, and guess where we are? We're right in the battle zone, and what that means for you is that at any point, especially tomorrow afternoon, Saturday afternoon, and Sunday afternoon, there may be one of these developing showers or thunderstorms, but none of the days including Mother's Day, will there be a washout? Here's our forecast. We're looking forward to that weekend and temperatures tonight dropping down to 39 to 45 degrees, just a couple of high clouds. By the way, if you're up in another hour, the moon will come up at 1133. It should be spectacular. Look to the east. Clouds thicken tomorrow after some sun in the morning, maybe a shower in the afternoon, but once again, certainly not expecting a washout. Saturday, same thing, an isolated shower only in 70 for mom, not bad. 74 degrees with an afternoon thunder shower. And then you see we stay rather seasonal here Monday and Tuesday. Frank and Julie, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the cabin cast music. We don't, no, Maybe we don't want to hear the theme from Deliverance all summer. No. <laughs> Once is enough. All right, Thanks, we'll look Ken. into it. Okay. Thank you. Get your people on that. <laughs> actually, tomorrow in the extra, an actually cool music scene that's hotter than ever in the Twin Cities. Here's a preview. Friday in the Care 11 Extra. What makes the Twin Cities one of the hottest jazz scenes in America? And where can you catch the beat? Friday at 10 in the Extra. It's hip. Big growing trend. Did you know that? Yeah, I think we're going to see some jazz on Saturday, as a matter of fact. We'll listen Friday, see if I'm going to the right places. Trend and Julie. Go mm -hmm. hand in hand. Oh, yeah. Twins are on the West Coast, and Randy has extended highlights. And KG is trying to escape the trappings of Sacramento. Sports is next.
Ford F-150, the best-selling truck in America, just got more affordable to drive than ever with a maintenance-free lease program from your Northland Ford dealer. For a limited time, get $1,500 in customer and bonus cash, lowering your monthly lease payment to just $249 a month, including your regularly scheduled maintenance. That's right. Drive home a new F-150 Super Cab, Motor Trend's truck of the year, for just $249 a month. Plus, get your scheduled maintenance paid for. So ask the experts about the maintenance-free lease program on F-150. Going on now at your Northland Ford dealer. If it can happen, Liberty Mutual's plan for it. We have pre-approved auto repair centers whose work we guarantee as long as you own the car. Liberty Mutual. It's more than insurance. It's insurance in action. One day, you gotta be there. Be there. Be there. Slumberland's ultimate one-day sale. Underline ultimate. One day, you gotta do it, do it, do it. Low sale prices everywhere, plus no minimum purchase, no interest for three years. One day, you gotta get it. Lumberland's ultimate one-day sale, this Saturday from 8 to 6. Oven mitt. What's with all the models? Well, now that Arby's has introduced salads every bit as good as you get at a nice sit-down restaurant, we are attracting a whole new crowd. True salad lovers are coming in for Arby's New Market Fresh Salads with tender chicken plus really fresh, really tasty, really surprising ingredients. Try the Asian sesame, the Martha's Vineyard, and the Santa Fe. These salads are a great idea. Yeah, a really great idea. Arby's New Market Fresh Salads, just $3.99. Hey, honey. Hey, just think of what we can do with all the money we're saving. Well, I have been giving it some thought. Really? Yeah. Prices you gotta see. Circuit City has a huge selection of digital cameras, all at great low prices. Right now, you'll get this Kodak 3.1 megapixel digital camera with printer dock for only $299.99. And get a free printer bag after mail-in rebate. This week only at Circuit City. We make Caitlin's food all from scratch, so we come to Cub Foods for the fresh produce. We got a industrial-sized blender, so we thought if we spent the money on it, we we're going to use it. She loves coming here, too, because then she gets to sit in the, in the cart here and wiggle her legs and everything. My mom's been surprised that she'll eat asparagus. <laughs> We've actually found that we started eating healthier because of it, because now we, you know, get more fresh produce and uh, have that around the house. And, of course, we don't eat her food because it's, like, soup, but... Randy's here. I take it all of my energy to be out here to say Tissue next, please. It's okay. They got back together just like you hope. I'll watch Leno in a minute. Want us to read these for you? You're going to be okay. If the Timberwolves are to beat Sacramento in Game 2 on Saturday night, they have to solve the trappings of Game 1. Charles Gonzalez explains. On the night Kevin Garnett received his MVP award, the Kings treated him like one. They double and triple teamed him the entire night. It was the same strategy they tried in the regular season, only this time they perfected it. I anticipate them, you know, trapping, but not as fast as they, you know, they, I wasn't even able to uh, put the ball on the floor. KG had one of his worst performances of the season, missing 15 of 21 shots and turning the ball over six times. He didn't even attempt a free throw until early in the fourth quarter as the Kings played as physical as the refs would allow. I do think that they were letting him, they were letting people, you know, grab him at the waist, you know, more. And that when he was going up to shoot it, you know, they weren't, they weren't contesting him high. They were kind of taking his legs out. You can't really cry and moan about that type of stuff, man. You just got to play the game, man. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not a referee, so I'm not going to start acting like I'm a referee. Garnett won't get any sympathy from the officials or the Kings, who know they'll have to stay one step ahead of the big ticket to leave Minnesota with another win. KG is an animal, and we know that he's going to come out, you know, next game and, you know, try not to let this happen again to his team. So, you know, we don't, there's no time to relax. I will go through this tape more than once and uh, dissect on things that they did to me, and I will adjust. With determination like that in his voice, 
There's no reason to believe otherwise. Charles Gonzalez, CARE 11 Sports. And just a reminder, Wolves and Kings, Saturday night, 8.30, start at Target Center. We'll have much more on the Timberwolves tomorrow. NBA tonight, Indiana's Ron Artest, honored as the NBA's Defensive Player of the Year, but he can score, too. Sizes up the three against Miami and then drains it, and Indiana in front early on. Watch the pass to the old guy, Reggie Miller. He'll finish here. Pacers are in front in the fourth quarter, 80-67 over the Miami Heat. Twins are underway in Seattle tonight. The game's on Victory Sports. We have a package of care highlights for you. We start with Shannon Stewart. Drives the ball into the gap in right center field. Luis Rebos will score from second base. Stewart gets the RBI, and the Twins take a 1-0 lead. And that might be all Brad Radke will need. He's looking great tonight. Radke facing Dan Wilson with two strikes already on Wilson, gets him to go down swinging. Garcia, Freddie Garcia, and Radke locked up in a pitcher's duel. Lou Ford is two for two so far. Batting average up near 400. Right now, Twins are in front, one zip in the sixth inning. Nice recovery. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back. Oh, that's headed for the water. Hey! <laughs> oh. You see that, man? Oh, come on. That's got to be a do-over. That's going to be a burden. At Amica Insurance, we make our customers' problems our problems. Amica Insurance. Auto. Home. Life. Integrity. Too bad you don't fit my golf bag. Well, I'm here to serve, sir. Thirty years ago, a neighborhood butcher created a cut of steak that was tender every time. All that was left to do was come up with a name. No name stakes, tender every time. Hi, Mom. Uh, now you've told me many times how painful my birth was 30 years ago. So to sort of share your experience, I'm going to take my hand and put it on this hot stove. Introducing Sprint PCS Video Mail. Just shoot it and send it instantly. Now get a Sprint PCS Vision Video Phone for $149.99. Just kidding, Mom. Stove is off. Happy Mother's Day. Sprint PCS. Check balances, transfer funds, view statements, all with a leader in internet banking. Just some of the ways Wells Fargo Free Checking helps you manage your money from anywhere. Wells Fargo, the next stage. Tonight on Friends Finale Night on...